something I hinted at in the community tab was to do a little sort of overview of radio transmitters that I've used. And as you can see, the first transmitter that I've used is right here. Or so you can't see it because it was a Turner G9X. Turner G9X transmitter. And uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately for the new owner, I gave it away with a plane. And that was, that was my first one for the simple reasons I wanted to t find out if I could still fly. It had been a while since I took up any flying, so I thought, right, let's buy a nice cheap transmitter that's got some power. And if you can see that flight test arrows, which is still on my wall, that was one of my first planes I built. Again, trying, trying the water out. I use foam ball planes, built foam ball planes simply because they're cheap. If you crash them, it's no great loss. Cheap transmitter that was good enough. So that was a good entry, but I soon came across its limitations in as much as try, the problem was trying to do anything other than a simple mix was nigh on impossible. It was it was like most Spectrum radios as of late. Uh, the mixes are built in, you just follow their rules. So I looked around for something that had decent power, was multi-protocol, uh, was had a decent operating system that you could do mixes with and had an external box. And what I came up with is this let's put it this way <laughs> the jumper TASG now it's bright yellow it's quite small which is handy it has an operating system called welcome to deviation deviation uh, and most people don't know of it really don't know of deviation it's an open operating system for radio transmitters. It's pretty powerful. You can have unlimited mixes on any channel. It's 12 channels transmitter. It's multi protocol, so it flies most things. And, turn that off. Got a nice bright display there. It's got the external box. And for that, I bought a Crossfire Mini, which is great. The other limitation, is the battery compartment. I mean I've got an 1800 2S in there and that's that's quite a squeeze. It really doesn't have a lot of battery so you virtually have to fly it every time you fly. Oh and the other thing the connector here if you want it to fly uh, any like a crossfire TBS crossfire you actually have to remove the top pin which has gone from here, and wire the base of it to the bottom pin. For some reason, the wiring on the pins as it comes is non-standard. I've also added the speaker, which makes a nice. Welcome to deviation. And it has all the voice prompts. So it... Engines up. Engines disarmed. Ego mode. Stunt mode. Ego mode. So it's. It really does have most of the functions that most people would want from a radio. And it's still a, a really good radio. However, it had the biggest limitations of the battery and the operating system. Deviation, really good, but not really very supportive. So, my next radio, I took the big leap to Open TX running on this Radio Master TX16S something I'm sure most people are familiar with and OpenTX is lovely I have upgraded this to Edge TX and with the Simpsons Welcome there as well Edge TX. Acro mode on. Disarmed. she's quite loud Goodbye. and uh, absolutely brilliant and, on the back it's got the uh, the ports on the back and I also bought myself a full full-blooded crossfire so expensive for what they are but they are absolutely brilliant if I could get it to fit into the compartment 
uh, this will go up to 2 watts or something mad like that so much power you never need that much power but put it on uh, put it on automatic it will just scale the power it puts out as needed this is lovely I love this radio but it's big it's heavy it does have the advantage of having two big oh, I don't know if I can get them out with this and the crossfire. I've got two 21 700 batteries in here, uh, 4200 milliamp hours in serial, so it's got loads of power to run the radio all day long, sort of thing. So much power, love Edge TX, great radio, but big and heavy. So I thought, well, what I really want is this is great, it's got the programmable buttons at the top, it's got everything you could need but it's huge. So what I thought was, what I want to do is go around flying quads like this. And this is a, quite a lightweight frame. It's got open uh, ELRS receiver on the front there, I've put it. And it's, I want to be able to travel light. So, I bought an ELRS, when I switched to ELRS, rather than trying to put an ELRS transmitter in the back of the T8S, uh, T16S, I bought myself one of these. This is the Betaflight, I think it says here, Betaflight Light Radio 2SE. And it's a great little radio. I mean, it does one thing really nicely. It's very, very lightweight. It's got a hundred milliwatt output of power on the transmitter through a patch aerial here. It's got two switches here, three switches here. That's it. Very, very good for when you plug it in into for uh, simulation flying as well. Absolutely brilliant. You don't even need to use the battery. When you plug it in on simulation, it powers it all up. It just works like a gamepad, effectively. The gimbals... Mm, they're okay. There's a little bit of a dead center, dead section in the middle, but they're pretty good. And it was this I used this summer when I was doing my first bit of sort of mountain quad flying. And I was watching, because I knew this was only 100 milli, milliwatts output, I was watching the, uh, the LQ of the transmitter quite strongly. And I thought, well, yeah, it's getting a little bit low at the top of the mountain. It was scaring me. I, the last thing I wanted to do was fail safe at the top. So I, it was actually limiting uh, limiting me. Oh, and the other limitation is you can't use the standard OpenTX configurator with this. No, Beta FPV make you use their own one. And currently this is only on 2.01 of a... Yeah, open uh, of ELRS so you can't use lots of channels you're going to use you've got four full channels and then they go into four bit channels and eight bit channels so nice little radio very handy very lightweight really packable and I like that got myself a little uh, rotor, printed myself a little Rotorite gimbal protector I like printing them because here's one gimbal protector I printed for this TASG. Uh, I've got a couple of to write gimbal protectors for the T16S. So, my love the the format. I really like the game style of it for quad flying. Feels just right in the hands, but I'm I'm scared of the power. So, my most recent purchase. And some people might go, oh my god, why she bought that piece of rubbish? This is the uh, jump, uh, the T Pro, yes, the Jumper T Pro. And I bought this from Hobby RC. It's got up to 500 milliwatt output, so it's got loads of power. It runs Edge TX as comes, that's the thing. It's sold with OpenTX and it's sold with uh, a, a dial both sides. But when you buy it from Hobby RC, I don't know if this is standard now, 
but they actually sell a version with the arm switch on this side already installed and Edge TX installed. So it's actually a much better transmitter than the standard Open TX version. The gimbals are really nice, though personally I would have preferred slightly shorter arm, uh, gimbal arms. Uh, my old fingers don't like being so high up, quite like the short ones on the Beta FPV. Compared to the Beta FPV, it's a similar style, but it's a lot heavier. With this one, I'm quite happy holding it in my hands. This one gets a bit heavy in the hands even then, so it's nice that it's got a lanyard position. Three position switches, momentary position, momentary, momentary, latching. It's got everything you need. Uh, you've got full open T uh, HTX control, so you've got trims here if you were to fly planes on it. And my only gripe with this one is that screen is really small and I find if I'm doing any adjustments I end up using a magnifying glass to see it clearly but I really like this controller it's got a decent aerial it's compact and say it comes with Edge TX or if you buy it from Hobby RC and it's under £100 and it's a quality radio it uses two uh, 18650 batteries under here. These were a pain to get off, but once they're back on, they're fine. You recharge it through the top. You can recharge it through here. You've got a trainer output. It works well on simulations, though you do have to turn it on before connecting. So I don't know if that flattens the battery off the top here. Really nice Hall Effect gimbals. Rotary switch for your HTX. This I think is absolutely excellent for flying quads. But oh, heavy, heavy. This is my favourite radio for flying iNav simply because you can fly it on that. I like, I love Crossfire, I trust cross, Crossfire. I like the big screen on this, it's very easy to set with what you want to do. You've got the full Lua script support here with the colour screen. So when you're running iNav you can go into all your telemetry and see what's going on. Bundles of switches that all work well. Little uh, these things I can never remember. Rotary controls here, rotary controls there. Sliders on the side, rotary controls on the top. I think I've got the best of both worlds. They're both Edge TX now. Uh, this is great for, it's got loads of oodles of power. Love it. This one, not so much power. And only ELRS. This does all protocols. So between the both, I've got everything I could want, radio control wise. I'm never going to get rid of this. Love this. I still fly the little planes on that and the indoor planes on that one because it's just simple and this one well this one's getting a bit superseded I don't know if I'm going to keep this but I would recommend it for someone who really wants to get into quadcopter flying cheaply with ELRS it's just it's like 50 pound 50 pound or less excellent little radio so that's where I am TX16S for big, bigger planes and iNav usage and the Jumper T-Pro for my quads. And I think between them, I've got everything I could want.